We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, aligning or tramming and adjusting the mill so that everything is, is square and exactly where we want it. This is a, a really key topic because this can cause a lot of frustration and, and poor work if your, your mill is not properly aligned. Um, you'll be wondering why am I getting these results, what, what's going on wrong, and a lot of times that's because of, of alignment. A lot of people also kind of fear this topic for one reason or another. Um, once you get used to doing it, it just takes a few minutes. It's not a whole lot of time. The first few times you might spend an hour, hour and a half or more doing it just as you make mistakes and, and things along those lines. But as you get used to doing it, you'll be able to do it in, in a matter of five, ten minutes or less. I've also lowered uh, my column. That just makes it easier for, for me to do some of these registrations. Um, also, really for the majority of work I do, I find that this is going to, to be the position I wanted in uh, regardless. So I have lowered that column down. In order to, to do this alignment, we're going to need a, a fairly accurate square. We're going to need a dial indicator of one type or another. So I'm using a, a last word. Any, any indicator is going to work for this. Um, you're going to need a method of holding it into the chuck and possibly some extensions. So we may use a, a bit of drill rod here. So to loosen this nut, and this nut will need a 17 millimeter wrench or an adjustable wrench. Uh, this is the only metric item that I've found on the Sureline to date. We're also going to need um, the hex wrench that, that came with the mill, or um, I like to use some of these long arm hex wrenches. Just gives me a little bit more flexibility when reaching in and tightening items if the head is down lower. Finally, having a small hammer and make sure it's a soft-faced hammer will allow you to nudge some of these alignments into place. If you don't have a soft-faced hammer, uh, then use a block of wood or something along those lines to protect uh, the finishes on your mill. So a few of these items um, I just recommend kind of aligning visually. You can use an indicator uh, to, to do this if you wish, but the first one we're going to talk about is the swing left to right. This is done by loosening up this nut up here. And I typically just try to visually align the, the center here with the lead screw on the y-axis. It's not going to matter whether it's here or here or here. The, the closer you are to center, the more the capacity you're going to be able to utilize. But you can swing that for different operations without worrying about it affecting your work pieces in a negative manner. The other is the, the ram travel of the column, so the front to back travel. Again, I try to center the spindle roughly in the middle of my travel space here. And uh, I found that that's at about one and a quarter inches. That also happens to just be where um, I'm not going to impact the wall here with the size of board that I've got and, and things I've mounted here. So that's roughly roughly centered back to front. You don't want to you don't want to normally operate this all the way out here because you're going to get a lot more flex in the column and you're putting that weight and, and getting a lot more leverage out here. So having it further back is going to give you a little bit more stiffness. So those two, just visual, both are, are adjusted with this nut here. Simple, straightforward. Two of the key ones that we need to worry about are the front to back tilt and the left to right tilt of our z-axis. These are really going to affect our workpiece qualities and, and the alignment of, of holes and doing multiple passes on workpieces and, and things along those lines. So the next item that I'm going to adjust just visually first and then we'll start using the square is the tilt left to right. So I purposefully tilted this way off to the side. So I'm going to loosen up these four screws on the round plate, you don't need to mess with these four screws in the front. Before you loosen up that last screw, make sure you have a, a good hold on the column or the head. Because as soon as you loosen that, this is going to be completely free. And there's pretty much no friction there, so you can just uh, rotate this at will. I'm just going to get it pretty close. And loosely tighten 
those screws back down. So we're going to continue with our visual alignment, but now we're going to bring a square into play to help us with that visual alignment. So we're going to place the square up against one of the ways in the machine surface, not, not the middle. And then we're just going to look for this gap. And as you can see, there's a lot more gap down here than up here. And you'll just be able to look for the light through this. In order to adjust this, you'll loosen this screw, which I already have loosened. Sorry, that nut. Keep calling it a screw. And then you can use uh, this to fine adjust the tilt. Right now, we can move it back all we want, but it's being held forward. So as we tighten this screw, or loosen, depending on, on which way your head is out of alignment, you're going to see that gap change. So just get that close to where you're not seeing any light through it, like so. Now you can snug this. So our next stage of rough visual alignment is going to be, um, again, using those milled surfaces with our square. And we can see that we've got a gap up here, no gap here. So we need to tilt the head in that direction. So I'm going to loosen these two screws and bring our square back in and then adjust that until I have little to no space left in there. Now, you probably won't be able to see it on the camera, but there is a little bit of space at the bottom. This is where our handy dandy hammer comes into play. I'm just going to come up here towards the top and give it a couple of taps to get get us a little bit closer there. Now tighten that back down, tighten this guy down, move our square out of the way, and snug up those last two. Don't need to be super tight on anything yet because we're going to have to do more adjustments here in a minute. Okay, so as I was making this video, um, I decided I'm going to go ahead and break this up into multiple parts. And in this first part, I'm just going to be showing rough alignment. That's going to be visual alignment and alignment using a square, not using a dial indicator. These are steps that you really should only have to do once with your new machine. And then after that, the alignments that you're going to be doing are with the dial indicator, which we'll show in another part. Now, if you do frequently do cuts where you are tilting the head and moving these axes, then you will have to redo this, this rough visual alignment. Um, using a square before you get back to the dial indicator stage. But for the most part, if you're not going to be making these adjustments frequently, all you'll have to do are the following steps in the next videos regarding the use of a dial indicator. Okay, so to finish off this part of the video, I am actually going to do some cutting. I, I do recommend you learn more, whether, you, whether you're doing some reading on your own or whether you've cut metal before, um, before you actually start cutting on the mill. Um, if you're just starting to watch this video series that I'm producing. But I'm going to create some test cuts here so you can see, one, the excitement of uh, metal being cut. And then also so you can see what a misalignment does on just some very, very simple facing cuts. If you don't want to see the, the cuts and uh, the results, then just skip ahead to the next video. There won't be anything else in this video. Now I have put... Uh, just some black out dye or some sharpie on here just to increase the contrast. And we're going to start with a very fine cut. So as you can see, um, we've only cut basically a line there. Now we're cutting a little bit on the front and the back because this uh, is just a piece of extruded aluminum, so it's not perfectly flat to begin with. But we'll go ahead and continue to make a couple more cuts and some deeper passes here and show what the end result will be. So here we can see that we fully cut across that face. And let's go ahead and cut this second section. So 
So here are the results after those two passes. I really wasn't paying attention to spindle speed or cut quality or anything like that. I mainly wanted to show you what the, what the mitts alignment does. Now in this case, we've got our head tilted out of alignment to some degree left and right. And with the nature of cuts we were doing, we get this line here in the middle. Now that's not just a visual line. It's actually a ledge. I mean, we can get caught on that. It's fairly small, but it's still there. You can definitely feel it. And you can certainly see it. So this is the type of, of thing that you're going to get uh, is some minor stepping basically from one piece to the next. Now, in this case, we could, because of the width of the fly cutter, cut it in this direction and get rid of that, but that's really not the answer. The answer really is to align it properly. And we'll do some test cuts once we are aligned properly um, to make sure that this is, is still good. Now, if we wanted to, we could do some cuts where we're cutting halfway through the piece with the fly cutter, then doing a second pass and what we'd find there is we're going to create a line down the middle because our, our front to back tilt on the head is also still off. So those, these are some of the kind of problems that you'll run into and the frustrations that you might see on your work pieces. Um, I did just want to show this so that you know, hey, if you get this type of, of behavior in a work piece, then you know your alignment is off.